All right, check out this new power tool. Boom! Welcome to Social Hour, everybody, where I talk about trending topics, meta topics, and whatever is going on on social media, so you guys don't have to. But starting off with some, I want to say, positive news is, imagine being in VR and your headset having the ability to recreate the scent of nature, and hopefully not a VR club anytime in the future. That I was about to say, I can't wait to go to just H Club with that tech. Yeah, that's. That's kind of nasty. I don't I don't think I would want that. Let's go ahead and watch that video with you guys real quick. Holy shit, this is going better than I expected. Stop jinxing it. Shit will just break because of you saying it goes well. Sh shut your mouth. All right, let's watch. We used AI to digitize and rematerialize the essence of a plum. What we've done is we've cut a plum here and we're going to put it into a vial where the scent that's leaving the plum is being trapped inside of this vial. And then what we can do is take this file to a machine which can suck the air outside of this file, which contains the smell of the plum, and then analyze those molecules one by one. The whole idea of this tech isn't just to say, hey, we recreated the scent of a plum, but the fact that they use artificial intelligence to analyze it, which I think is pretty interesting in itself. I don't know. I'm hyped for it because even though they require a whole lab, we've seen tech shrink slowly over time. So if this eventually does get implemented into something as small as, let's say, the big screen VR for VR headsets, and then there's a little add-on for it, I think that's pretty exciting news. Are you not excited? Feet and treadmill tracking with insoles. A company started working on shoe insoles to track your feet, but also to give pressure data. I will say, Imagine if you put these on and it can tell how heavy you are, so your avatar adjusts to your actual height and weight. Ooh, that's gonna be a wake up call for a lot of VR chatters. <laughs> it, it just. Just imagine that. It, it just kind of reminds me of that one scene from the first season of SAO where everyone gets trapped and then all the girls turn into guys because they were just role playing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be kind of kind of grody, man. Yeah, there's no audio on this, but you can kind of see it's insoles for your shoes, which I think is really neat. So if we look on Twitter, it says with our OSC server, we can stream motion and pressure data. Um, yeah, pressure data, rotation data, but over on Blue Sky, um, we talked about that a little bit more in depth. It's just rotation. It's just rotation. Just orientation, no position. Wow, everyone's on blue sky now, huh? Yeah, fuck Twitter. I do want to say they gave a special shout out to a guy named, hopefully I don't butcher his name, Duin Rahaik. Because if you don't know, Duin released Treadmill OSC. Honestly, I'm so tempted to get a treadmill just because of that. Like, just infinity walking will be so much fun with that. I know VR chatters have this reputation of being really overweight and lazy, but, but just... If I think for a moment, genuinely, I think if they're willing to drive tech and innovation to try to recreate the reality for the sake of ERP, they might become some of the most fit gamers this world has ever seen. Seriously. If every single gamer had the physique of Tyler1, minus the height, I think that would just be a net positive for society. You don't think so? <laughs> fit gamers? Really fit gamers? Honestly, it will be cool, but just imagine mixing the stereotypes. You have like this buff, huge, muscular gamer that can run a mile in like 10 minutes. It smells like fucking three weeks old trash. <laughs> like you expect this hot, well smelling man, and then you get just hit in the face with a brick. <laughs> uh, like they, they become really, really fit, but they never learned hygiene because VR chat hasn't taught them. Yes. That's, yes. that's kind of gross. Sounds like you have personal experience. Next slide, please. No, they don't even come that close because I am ugly. What's with furries and self-deprecating jokes? You are <laughs> almost perfect just the way you are. You're not perfect, but you're you're almost perfect. Okay, there we go. Bill Gates mogged Steve Jobs in 1983. Did you know in 1981, Steve Jobs goes to Microsoft and asks them to become the very first third-party app developer for the brand new Macintosh. And part of this promise, oh shit. And part of this promise and the contract meant Microsoft cannot release their own Microsoft OS until one year after the Mac finally drops to the public. 
So, in order to develop what is known as the early, early predecessor of Office Suite, so your Excel and Word and all that, they assign a high school kid named Neil Kanzen to handle the implementation. Now, later that year, in November, Microsoft goes to a conference and they go, hey, did you know we're gonna announce Windows with an early version of the Office prototype that you guys are seeing that we were developing for Apple? And then Steve Jobs gets, he gets really pissed off. Quote, so fucking mad about qu this. quote, get Gates down here immediately, end quote. So Bill Gates shows up and they get in an argument. Steve J Jobs is like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with you? And Bill says, hey, hey, Steve. Did you know that we didn't copy anything from you? We had gotten inspiration from a cousin named Xerox. For the, for the Gen Zers, Gen Alphas that don't know Xerox, it's the, it's the grandfather of grandfathers for computers. And you can see an image of it right below here next to mogging Bill Gates. But also the way the contract worked was Apple was supposed to release it in a year, but then they delayed it. So it was like two years later. And then Microsoft was like, well, you know, technically it's been a year, so we're not breaking the rules by announcing our own OS. And then that's exactly what happened. Next slide. Also in recent news, did you know that the Vatican releases an anime girl mascot named Luce? Yes, I'm actually being serious. The Vatican. L look at that picture. For the holy year 2025, they feature this anime girl in a raincoat because the Vatican says we must adapt to pop culture if we want to connect with the youth. And so that is how you get Luce here. Some of the comments are so freaking funny. We officially got Catholic anime girls before GTA 6, and we now quite <laughs> literally have the power of God and anime on our side. I have the power of God and anime on my side! Wait, yeah. Let me just show you some- I can't wait for that shonen anime knockoff with this specific model in it. D okay, but for real though, she is kind of cute. Like, she's adorable. I think she is kind of cute. She is she is kind of cute. You have to give it to them. It's not like they're trying to just take one of these hot, big titty waifu avatars, uh, anime figurines that just make it Christian. Like, they're going for a child-friendly, neutral approach, and you have to give that to them. I think it is going to show how the internet is connecting a lot of people in different ways and every single organization, religious, gaming, whatever it is, you name it, they have to adapt. And the, we are now seeing the Vatican release an anime girl. Just this image of an old guy, this feels really surreal, I'm not gonna lie to you. Can I just say, you know what, this figurine reminds me of Star Wars. It looks like a fucking amiibo. Yo, you're kind of right. This anime girl does look an, <laughs> like an amiibo. You were making fun of me for NFTs earlier, right? No, I was making fun of you for staying on Twitter. Speaking of NFT news, <laughs> Did you know that Mr. Beast <laughs> is, God, is that a Did bridge. you know Mr. Beast is now under public investigation for many many crypto scams? Mm. So if Mr. Beast cannot get into more mm. hot water with mm. the allegations mm. made towards his friend Chris farming mm engagement in predatory ways and lunchly cheese molding. There is a public investigation into Jimmy scamming fans out of hundreds of thousand dollars by promoting and investing in really bad crypto coins. He publicly says he bought this NFT, which means that his wallet address is out there, which also means that because everything on the blockchain is public, these guys really, really got to work. God. Yeah. There was dumb of him to tweet, that's all I would say to this. <laughs> yeah, if you own these assets, just keep it quiet. This is just one of the maps that show how many transactions are le linked to each other between different accounts. And we could go s sit here and go through each one, but yeah, you see this? Mapping out the beast. Holy hell, first principles. The it's re- they go through a lot. They go through a lot. Superverse, formerly Super Farm rugged, there's pre-sale, the DMs with Mr. Beast, Tweet 1, Tweet 2, KSI Crypto with an NFT profile, Super Earn. You can see when this specific wallet dumps all their money. Look at that just bloodbath of red. Like this entire document, look, I'm, I'm scrolling down as fast as I can. It just keeps going. That shit keeps scrolling. It keeps going. Actually, what the hell did I see here? 
I thought that was Bell Delphine for a second. But look, look, this is a public round for funding money. And this is, this is one of the influencers that they called out. What is this trash? Listen, I might like cryptocurrency sometimes, but this is genuinely, this is straight up scamming. I think if Jimmy just shut the hell up, didn't expose their wallet, no one would have ever known. They just would have been another random name in blockchain history. I don't know how Jimmy's gonna come back from this one. I mean, crypto is one of those things where if you get called out for it, it's not really, really a big deal. It is a big deal in a sense that there are people who lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, life savings. You just see all those really sad stories. And so when you take a guy like Jimmy, Mr. Beast, top of the game of YouTube, and he scams people off of crypto, you get a couple of reactions where people who aren't into crypto go, yeah, you deserve to lose your money. Why would you? Why would we help you? And then the people who are in crypto can't get the support from outside people that they need. So it just becomes this really bad feedback loop of people losing money and then bad actors get away with it because, Oh, it wasn't me directly. It was people tied to my wallets that were scamming other people. I don't know these people's blockchain, but you can't prove I own these wallets. You would say this is pretty fraudulent activity, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fraudulent activity, we got voting fraud. <laughs> there was a, there's a. Already? Yeah. Yeah. Check this Did out. Check this just out. Start? There was a viral tweet in Canada by a guy who said he crossed the border to vote because they didn't check ID. And this story made it to national Canadian news. But Twitter did some detective work and found out that this image was just a cropped image of someone else's ballot. So is it really voter fraud? No, because this image is fake. But that doesn't mean stories like this does not happen because it did actually happen with a Chinese university student who wasn't a citizen and they got caught voting. Do you want to know how they got caught voting? Hit me. <laughs> All right. The way they got caught voting was really, really dumb. So he submits his ballot, then calls the county clerk to go get his ballot back. But he can't get it back because he already voted. I'm I'm actually serious. This is the this is the Twitter Twitter post about it. This is the full story on DetroitNews.com, and so you would think in a in a country full of integrity and people who take the voting process really really seriously that they would get his ballot back. But uh, no. Did you know that since the ballot already made it through the voting machine, his vote will still count? So when you think about it, who knows how many illegitimate votes are existing out there? Also, why the hell would you call the why the hell would you call the county clerk to get your vote back? Did you want to change it last minute from Kamala to Trump to Trump to Kamala to some in their independent pro? Oh, I I just don't know what the thought process was there.